So we come to the book or the chapter of Salah. And there are two types or two categories of Salah. That which is an obligation and that which is encouraged and recommended. And Salah or the fiqh of Salah, the rulings of Salah, they pertain to the conditions of Salah, the prerequisites. And the arkan of a salah, i.e. the fundamental pillars and ob obligations of salah. And the wajibat of salah, the obligations of salah. And then the sunan of salah, which, is the, which are the recommended, encouraged actions within the salah. And then finally the mubtilat, those matters which invalidate the salah. So what are the conditions or the prerequisites of a salah? The conditions of salah, they have to be fulfilled external to the salah. And as for the fundamental pillars of salah, they are within the salah. Similar to this, the wajibat are within the salah. As for the condition, it is before the salah, but it has to be maintained throughout the salah. And as for the rukan, which is the fundamental pillar, then it is a small section of the salah. So wudu, is it from the conditions of salah? Is it from the pillars of salah? Is it before salah or inside salah? If you have to make wudu before the salah, then this is a condition. And also, when it comes to wudu, does a person have to maintain wudu throughout the whole salah? Yes. And therefore, it's a condition of the whole salah. As for the pillars of salah, then like the statement, Allahu Akbar in takbiratul ihram. And so, takbiratul ihram, this statement, Allahu Akbar, it's a pillar, but it finishes as soon as you have verbalized it. Unlike the wudu, which has to extend throughout the salah. So this is one of the differences between a shart, a condition, and a rukan, a fundamental pillar of salah. That the shart is a prerequisite which is external to the salah. It has to be fulfilled before the salah. And as for the rukan, then it is a part of the salah. And what is common and shared between the rukan and the shart is that if a person forgets and does not do or does not perform a condition or a pillar then that forgetfulness is not an excuse. He Sal has to repeat the prayer. So if a person prayed salah without wudu, we say his salah is invalid. Even if he was forgetful or he did it intentionally, if he was ignorant, no difference, the salah is invalid. He made salah, he prayed salah and he did not make sujood. We say the salah is invalid. Whether he was ignorant or forgetful or if he did it intentionally, the salah is invalid. As for the wajibat, the obligations of salah, and the wajibat, they resemble the arkan, the pillars. So the difference between the rukan and the wajibat is that for the wajibat, forgetfulness or ignorance is an excuse which is accepted. And, it, and in this case, it does not invalidate the salah. As for the rukan and the shart, as we mentioned, forgetfulness and ignorance is not an excuse which is accepted. If a person abandons the first tashahud, and the first tashahud is an obligation. If he was forgetful or he was ignorant, the prayer is valid. However, if he intentionally abandoned it, then the salah is invalid. If a person abandoned the last tashahud, then the salah, it is invalid regardless of whether he was forgetful or ignorant or he did it intentionally. What are the conditions or the prerequisites of salah? Who knows Kamila. Them? Who knows them all of them? Mashallah. So firstly, Al-Islam, meaning if a non-Muslim prayed Salah, his Salah is invalid. The second condition is Al-Aql, that that person has to have sanity. And therefore, if a, a mentally disabled person prayed Salah, then the prayer is invalid. If a person prayed and he was intoxicated, what's the ruling of his Salah? Um, if a person prayed and he was intoxicated, his Salah is invalid. Which one is better, the one who is insane or the one who is intoxicated? The insane person or the one who is mentally disabled is better than the one who is intoxicated. Why? Because he is ill. And then the third condition of salah is a tamiz. And a tamiz is, is mental maturity by which the child can differentiate between matters. Is the salah of a young child valid? So if the child has enough mental maturity that he can dis dis distinguish between matters, then the prayer is valid. And then the fourth condition is the intention. And the intention, its place is in the heart and to verbalize it is a bid'ah. And also from the conditions of salah is removing yourself from the state of major or minor impurity. And the next condition is the removal of physical impurities from your body and your clothing and the area in, upon which you are praying. 
The next condition is for the time for that salah to have entered and to cover the awrah, the private part, and that for a person to face the direction of the qibla Mecca. Um, if a person mentions that they are nine, then this shows that he has understood them or he has understood them. As for the awrah, then the awrah of a woman who is baligha, she is over the age of puberty when she is praying salah is that she has to cover the entirety of her body, of her body apart from the face. Now, And if she's in front of men who are ajanib, who are not mahram to her, then even the face has to be covered. And as for the man, then the man has to cover that which is between his navel and his knees. And it is emphasized or highly encouraged for him to have something which covers both of his shoulders, along with beautifying yourself for the salah. And as for facing the Qibla, is it in the Fara'id, the obligatory prayers or the Nawafil? So facing the Qibla is a condition for both the Fard prayer and the Nafal prayer. Except the difference is that in the Nafal prayer, a person is allowed to pray in any, in any direction in which or towards which his riding beast is facing. As for the Fard Salah, has to face the Qibla. As no. for the fundamental pillars of Salah, so there are 14 pillars of Salah. Now, a person has to be precise in his learning and his knowledge. And so if a person understands knowledge precisely in his mind, then when he speaks with it, it will be precise. But if a person has understood knowledge, but it is chaotic, then similarly when he speaks with it, it, with it, it will be like that. The brother, Jazahullah Khair, he mentioned the arkan of Salah are 14. And he mentioned them in order. As for a person saying, the arkan of salah, they are about maybe, and the first of them is the last tashahud, and this shows that he has not understood knowledge. So the first fundamental pillar of salah is standing up if you are able to do so. And this is for the fard prayer. As for the nafal salah, a person is allowed to pray and he is sitting. However, his reward for sitting, praying sitting is half of standing. And if he prays his salah lying down, then it is a quarter of the reward of standing up. No. And then the first takbirah, which is known as takbiratul ihram. And the intended meaning of takbiratul ihram is the statement Allahu Akbar, not the action of raising the hands. Because the action of the raising of the hands, this is an obligation, wajib. And the next pillar of salah is the recitation of Surah Al-Fatiha. And Surah Al-Fatiha has to be recited in the silent salah and the loud salah whether a person is resident or whether a person is traveling in every single rak'ah of the salah. And there is one situation in which the obligation of Surah Al-Fatiha does not apply. And that situation is if a person comes late for the congregation and he catches the imam making ruku' and then he joins in with the ruku' of the imam. In that situation, the obligation of the Fatiha no longer applies and this is due to the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then also the Ruku' and then standing up after the Ruku' and the meaning of Al-I'tidal is that a person he stands up completely after the Ruku' and then his bones are settled in that position and then making sujood on seven limbs and that is the forehead and the nose as one limb and then the palms of the two hands the two knees, and also the bottom of the toes. So which sujood is the rukan? Is it the first or the second? And also sitting up after the ruku', after the sujood. So these are two separate pillars. One is rising up from the sujood, and then sitting between the two prostrations. Tamam. And then the next pillar is a a person being calm and tranquil in every action of the salah. How do we know what is tama'nina? So you know when you have tama'nina in salah, if you are able to say the dhikr or the legislated saying in that part of the salah. For example, if you go into sujood and you can clearly say subhana rabbi al-a'la and then you get up, then in the majority of cases, this is at tamanina As for a person rushing the salah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, this diminishes at tamanina And the prayer is invalid. And the next pillar, the fundamental pillar of salah, is that these pillars have to be performed in sequence, in the correct sequence. Firstly, a person stands up, then he makes takbir, and then he says, Surah Al-Fatiha, like this. And then the final tashahud, 
This is also a pillar of the Salah. Of course, the final tashahud, tashahud applies when there are two tashahud in the Salah, and therefore the final one is the pillar. If it's Salat al-Fajr, where there's only one tashahud, then that is the pillar, meaning the tashahud before the taslim, this is from the pillars of our Salah. And then the next pillar of the Salah is sitting down for the tashahud, because perhaps a person will say the tashahud and he's standing up, and he says, I fulfilled the pillar. So therefore it has to be said whilst he is sitting down and therefore that's the next pillar of Salah. And then also sending salutations upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If it is in the last rak'ah then it is a rukan. And if it is in the second rak'ah or four rak'at then it remains something which is encouraged. And then the final uh, pillar of the Salah are the two taslims to the right and the left. As for the obligations or the wajibat of salah, there are eight wajibat of salah. The first of them are the takbirat aside from takbiratul ihram, meaning the statement Allahu Akbar after takbiratul ihram. And then the next obligation of salah is saying the tasbih of ruku' and that, it, and that is subhana rabbi al azim with these wordings. And the obligation to say it at least once. And then increasing above this is a it's something which is sunnah, something which is encouraged. And also making the other various adhkar which have been narrated in the ruku'. And also the saying, Sami' Allahu liman hamida. And this is an obligation for the imam and the one who is praying alone. As Our, for the congregation behind the imam, it is not an obligation for them. And also the statement, Rabbana wa lakal hamd. This is an obligation for every person, meaning the imam and the congregation and the one who is praying alone. And then also saying Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la in sujood with this wording at least once. And also saying Rabbi Ghfirli during the two prostrations. And also the recitation of the first tashahud and sitting for the first tashahud. As for those matters which invalidate the salah, if a person does not know and understand the invalidated of salah, perhaps your salah is invalidated and you do not know. So firstly, when it comes to the movements within the Salah, the Sheikh mentioned that the movements of the Salah, they can be categorized by the five rulings of Al-Islam. So there is a movement within the Salah which is haram, like eating, drinking and laughing. And then there is movement in the Salah which is makruh, which is disliked, like looking slightly towards the right and the left. And then there is a movement in the Salah which is permitted, allowed, like a person who was praying and a fly approached him and so with the smallest amount of movement he, he uh, made it go away. And then there is a movement in the Salah which is encouraged and recommended. And this is any type of movement in the Salah which perfects and completes a person's Salah. So if that person moved then it entails the perfection of that Salah. Like for example joining the rows and if there's any gaps joining the rows. So the harakah or the movement which is an obligation within the salah is any type of movement which is required for the salah to be valid. No. And so if a person does not make that movement, the salah is invalid. Like for example, if I was wearing my shamar, my headscarf, and I found some najasa, some physical impurity on the headscarf. So I make a movement to remove the shamar from my head. As for those matters which invalidate the salah, firstly, speaking intentionally. Uh, if a person speaks in the salah intentionally and he knows and understands that this speech, it invalidates the salah and he's knowing of this and he's not forgetful. So if a person is praying salah and a falcon comes and he says, Yes, I'm praying Salah. And then the next invalidator of Salah is when a person makes frequent movements within the Salah. And the frequency of those movements, it depends upon the Urf. Meaning, if a person was to look at that person, he would think that he's not even praying. Like a person who takes out his phone and then begins checking his messages and playing with his phone, such that if a person saw him, he would consider him that he's not even in the prayer. And then the third invalidator of Salah is to turn away from the Qibla completely. So if the Qibla is in one direction and he turns completely towards the east or completely towards the west or the left, 
then this invalidates the salah. And we said eating and drinking and laughing and also the exposure of one's aura. And this is like a person who prays in trousers and then when he goes into ruku' or sujood, his aura is exposed and therefore the prayer is invalid. And also the salah is invalidated by that which invalidates a person's wudu. Like for example, whilst praying, a person passes wind and he knows this by oh, yeah. certainty, meaning he smells something or hears a sound. So this one said that I am the Imam of the Masjid. And if I'm the Imam of the Masjid and I'm leading the Salah, and then there's a, a passage of wind, how am I meant to abandon the Salah? There are so many people behind me. The answer is that it is forbidden for a person to complete the Salah and he has broken his wudu. And this is normal and it is natural that every people they pass wind, it's not just the Imam. But we have a solution for you. That a person, he pretends to cough and then he leaves. Huh? And then after this, the Salah, which is an obligation upon us, are five. Firstly, Salat al-Fajr, the prayer at dawn. And this is two raka'at. And, and, and the Salah of noon, and this is four raka'at. And the Salah of the early evening, Salat al-Asr, which is four raka'at. And Salat al-Maghrib, the Salah of sunset, which is three raka'at. And the Salah of night, which is known as Salat al-Isha, and this is four raka'at. And if a person is on a journey, those Salawat, which have four raka'at, then they are divided into half to two. Meaning, dhuhr and asr and isha, the prayer is shortened from four raka'at to two raka'at. As for fajr and al-maghrib, it is not shortened. And this is why the ulama, they call this section shortening the salah of four raka'at. So they do not say shortening salah, Rather, they say shortening the salah of four raka'at. And it is permitted for a person who is on a journey to combine between dhuhr and asr and maghrib and isha. And he can either bring the latter one earlier or delay the earlier one. And also, the prayers which are prayed at night or in the evening, i.e. fajr um, and maghrib and isha, a person recites them out aloud. And also, every salah in which there is a congregation legislated, then it has to be done loud. Like Al-Jum'ah and the two Salat Al-Eid and the Salah for the Rain and the Eclipse where there is Solar or Luna. All of this is done aloud. And with regards to Salat Al-Jama'ah, i.e. the Salah in the congregation, what is the ruling of Salat Al-Jama'ah? So what is the ruling of praying in congregation? It is wajib, it is an obligation. And this is the least which is said, that it is a paramount obligation. In fact, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimullah, he said that if a person who is able, a man who is resident and is able to pray in congregation and he does not do so, the prayer is invalid. And this is what Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimullah said. As for Salat al-Jum'ah, Salat al-Jum'ah, it is legislated for it to be prayed when a person is resident and not traveling. And the least amount of people for whom is an obligation to pray Salat al-Jum'ah is three people as Shaykh ibn Uthmi rahimullah said, the Imam and then two who are praying behind him. And the Jum'ah has to be brought early. Firstly, the Imam begins by climbing the pulpit or the mimbar and giving salam to the people. And then he sits down and then the Adhan is given. And then the Khatib, he stands to give a khutbah and he admonishes the people. If the person said, fear Allah or worshippers of Allah, then this is an admonishment. He recites an ayah and he sends salutations upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and this is a khutbah and then he sits down for a small amount of time and then he gets up again and then he gives another khutbah. Then after this he leads the people in salah with a loud prayer. Then this is khutbah, this is Salat al-Jum'ah. And a person recites in Salat al-Jum'ah out aloud and the sunnah is that after Surah al-Fatiha in the first rak'ah he recites Surah Al-A'la. And the obligation in the second raka'ah after Surah Al-Fatiha is he recites Surah Al-Ghashiyah. And the sunnah of the nawafil which are prayed before Salat Al-Fajr is that in the first raka'ah he recites Surah Al-Sajdah and in the second raka'ah he recites Surah Al-Qiyamah, Surah Al-Insan. As for the actions which are legislated on Friday, firstly the recitation of Surah Al-Kahf. Why? Because it is a sunnah, but why? Because on a Friday, 
whilst you're in this blessed day, you have to remember to be distanced from the dunya and the fitna of the dunya. A person remembers his wealth and he remembers how this can be a fitna for him. So what does Surah Al-Kaf contain? Firstly, the tribulations of the youth and the tribulations of wealth and the fitna of the and a person should distance himself from these fitna all of them and also from the legislated actions on friday is to send peace peace and salutations upon the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and also performing ghusl for jumaa and being early to the jumaa and also a person utilizing and seeking out the time in which the dua is accepted on a friday and this is especially before salat al-maghrib <laughs> لا ما يمكن لا ما يمكن أخذوا فسحات كثيرة يا شيخ عشر وأيش نسنا الآن نستمر إلى عشرة إلى عشرة ممكن طيب ولا إيش رأيك فسح كثيرة مشكل يصبر هذا إن شاء الله ها طيب إذا نأخذ استراحة فسحة خمسة أو عشر دقائق إن شاء الله تعالى طيب جزاكم الله خير سبحانك خمس دقائق خمس دقائق مو مشكلة until nine twenty إن شاء الله we take a short break